Good morning, good morning, good morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. It is a blessing to have a father. But those that don't, they have a heavenly father. And he said he would supply each and every one of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? Good. This morning our scripture is coming from Psalms 103. So if all of you that have your Bibles, if you would stand with me and read the word of God in reverence unto him. And once you found it, if you would answer by saying amen. And the word of God reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth my, thy life from destructions, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5 Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God, for being our God and allowing us to be your people. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see this day that you've made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we ask this morning, O oh God, that you forgive us of all of our sins, those that we committed willingly and unwillingly, O oh God. Father, uh, we want to thank you, dear God, for allowing us to come together and assemble ourselves and give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, I ask this morning 
Oh God, that you bless each and every one that is here in this house. Those, oh God, that are listening by way of social media, oh God. Father, I ask that you bless all those that are convalescing at home. Oh God, I ask that you meet the needs of your people today, oh God. Father, we welcome your presence in this house today. Have your way, oh God. Lord, we just ask, oh God, that you create in us a clean heart. Renew within us a right spirit, oh God. That we can serve you in spirit and in truth, oh God. Father, that we can look to the hills and know that all of our help comes from you, oh God. And Lord, we are thankful today, oh God, that you said in your word, God, that you will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God, we need you, oh God. Lord, we need you like we've never needed you before, God. For we know that your word said that you would never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. You said we could ask anything in your name. Believe and it shall be given unto us. For that we said thank you. Lord, we lift up Hurricane Tampa to you today as a whole. Lord, we ask that you, Lord God, rain your fire from heaven, oh God. Renew, oh God, a fresh anointing upon your people today, God. Lord, be with our pastor as he stands and rightfully divide the word, God. Able us to eat at your table, oh God, that we shall not hunger or thirst no more. And Father, I ask that you bless the praise team as they sing praises unto your name. Lord, I bless the, every organization that's here at Hurricane Chapel. Bless every church that's open and guided by your Holy Spirit today, God. And we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. Now, God, we ask, oh God, that you bless, oh God, this universe. Be everything that we stand in need of. And Lord, again, we'll be careful to give your name, praise, honor, and glory. We ask all of these things in the most holy and precious name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. And the body of Christ agree together and say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Lord to mighty, 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 Lord to my Lord Lord to my Lord to my Lord Lord to my 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 Think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we Oh Lord, how 
It is good to be here, and we greet each of you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Can y'all help me celebrate this praise team this morning? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done, and certainly we give him first place in this sanctuary, and we certainly honor all of you who've come to share this morning in worship. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers and happy Father's Day to all of the mothers who serve as fathers and to all of you who've stood in the gap for so many of the fathers. It is good to be here, and we are cer certainly thankful for the opportunity to be able to share his word this morning. Um, as we prepare for our word this morning, we not only greet you that are here, certainly thank God for all of you who are watching us online as well. Thank God for your commitment to um, be a part of this worship experience as well. Um, we're going to get straight to our word, but as we prepare for our word, let's bow for prayer. Fathers, we come, we thank you for the privilege of being here in your presence. God, as we celebrate this day and as we uh, come together knowing that you're the God of all seasons, we pray that you'll bless every person that's here. We pray that you bless every person who is watching us. And God, as always, uh, we pray that you will clear our minds, clear our thoughts, let our focus be solely on you, God. We thank you, God, for the increase that you bring. We thank you for praise. We thank you for worship. Now, God, forgive us of all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And let all of us, let our worship be pure. Let our worship be authentic. And let what we give you, God, come from our hearts. We honor you. We thank you. And I'll please accept our expression of praise this morning. For we are thankful that you are God. And we are thankful that you have kept us. We are thankful that you've ordered our steps. We are thankful that we're still here. We honor you today, God. Have your way in this worship. Be reckless with your worship, our worship. I pray, God, that you will do whatever you need to do to bring glory to your name. Let this preach word be a word that lifts us up, oh God, that encourages us, stabilizes us, but also let this be a word that convicts us. We thank you for this moment. Now, God, have your way, and may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us agree together and say amen. amen. Can you give God one hand clap of praise? <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank God again for all of you that are coming and sharing. Uh, certainly want to um, say to the, all of those that have children in the back, um, they are having um, a blackout day. And I'll let you figure that out any way you want, but they're having a blackout uh, moment back there, and it's dark and all that kind of stuff back there. I asked them to turn the lights on so I could see my way through. <laughs> but, you know, to God be the glory for what he's doing uh, in this hour with our young people. I, I want to call your attention to um, a very familiar um, scripture. Um, it's going to take you a moment to find it if you're not familiar with it, but it's the book of Jude, J-U-D-E. It's in the New Testament, okay? 
the book of Jude. If you're not careful, you'll go right by it. And if you're cloudy with where it's at, go to the beginning of your Bible, look down the table of contents, and you'll see Jude um, toward the very end of the contents, okay? J-U-D-E, Jude, um, Jude 24 um, is what I want to read. Once I read the scripture to you, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's where that's at. Jude 24. Jude 24, and if you have it, um, can you say amen? amen? I'll read it, and you'll say, oh, yeah, that in the, that's in the Bible. Uh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to be very simple this morning, just looking at this particular verse. I want to use three words. God is able. Amen. Nothing deep, but that's exactly what this verse talks about. God is able. When we look at this text, we realize that this is the conclusion of Jude's short letter. Notice that this is what we are accustomed to reading, and we are very familiar with this in terms of our benediction. It is approval and a blessing upon all of the believers. It is one of the most well-known benedictions by Christians all over this world. If we were to dissect this message, we could see the great message on the source of the believer's security. The question might be asked, uh, Pastor Well, what is the source of the believer's security? Uh, the source of the believer is he who keeps the believer safe and secure, and that's what we consider to be God's keeping power. Uh, the most important thing that I'll probably say today that you'll remember, not just today, but for the rest of your life is, God is a keeper. And to know that God can keep you is enough to keep you moving forward. The God we serve is able to keep us from failing, and he keeps us even from fading. The God we serve keeps us from um, dwindling. He keeps us from deteriorating, and he also keeps us from decreasing. The God we serve keeps us from reduction, from decline, and decay. And the reason why God can do that is because God has what we call keeping power. When others fail, he has the power to sustain you. When others leave, he has the power to remain. When others don't know, he has the power to even explain. When others say that you can't, uh, he has the power to proclaim because God has the keeping power that we need. In other words, God alone has the power to keep us from falling in a world that has so much corruption, but also has so much uh, false teaching. But for God to actually keep us, uh, we must draw near and stay in touch with him. And you're probably wondering how do we do that? We do that by daily reading. We do that by studying the word of God. We do that by prayer and supplication and by walking righteously uh, before him. We do that by learning to walk moment by moment in open and unbroken prayer and communion and fellowship with him. And when we do that, God is able to make us, like the scripture says, make us blameless whenever we come face to face with him. I know you've heard this on many occasions, and many of you are very familiar with this verse, but we want to break it down and talk a little bit about it because I think it's something that we take for granted. We know that he is a keeper, and we know that it's God who keeps us, and it's God who has kept us, but sometimes I think we forget or lose sight on the fact that no matter what you're dealing with, God is able and I'm going to stay there for a moment. Uh, and when you read um, this verse, uh, the word blameless um, is, it's a Greek word, and it's, it, it's actually a, another word that speaks for 
um, uh, spotless and pure. It's amoas, uh, and without defilement. It talks about um, that God is able to accept us in Jesus Christ as uh, the spotless lamb of God. And in Jude 21, uh, we're told that we are to keep ourselves in uh, the love of God. And here we are told in this verse that God keeps us. Uh, and you're probably looking at those two verses, and you're probably saying at some point, well, what is the difference? Uh, and the difference is we must watch that we stay close to the Lord, but it is only God that can guard us so we do not stumble. You're not able to take care of yourself. God takes care of you. And so the text gives us only um, uh, 25 um, simple words that should give us some assurance that he's still able. And some, some of you all know, uh, and you've read these verses several times, and you've heard them at the end of, um, of many services. Uh, and, and some of you that know me know that I love numbers. And when I noticed <clears throat> that it was 25 words, I knew the significance that made this passage so powerful. I knew that by reading it and understanding numbers, uh, that two was the number of witness, uh, which tells me that God um, is a witness uh, to what he's able to to do. Is there anyone that can testify this morning that God is a witness to the things that he's blessed you with? He's not only blessed you, but he was there doing the blessing. And the interesting is we all have been witnesses to God's unlimited power. And I'll say it over and over again. We serve a God who is all powerful. We serve a God who's able to do anything except fail. And this is what I love about um, um, this particular text. I remember years ago uh, when I was fresh out of um, seminary school, got a chance to buy my first car uh, by myself. I bought my car and it was a, um, a Toyota Camry. I was so happy to have that Toyota Camry, brand new right off the lot, just excited about it. And the first thing I did was went to the mall and put a tag on it. And the tag on the front of the car said, God is able. And I remember that just as a young lad, but I understood then the concept that no matter what you're dealing with, you serve a God who's able. And let me remind you this morning, uh, for those who need to just hear it, uh, um, let's don't get too deep with this. Uh, understand that your circumstances mean nothing to God. Uh, God can handle anything. Let, let me say that again. God can handle anything. And if you want to go deeper and be theological, not only can he handle anything, he can handle anybody. And, and so God has the power uh, to show us what he's capable of doing. So two was the number of witness, but then the number five is the number of grace. So this tells me that his grace is sufficient even when I'm going through my trials and tribulations. He gives me the grace, watch this, he gives me the grace to make it through. So even when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, and I know the word tells me that I should fear no evil because he's with me and all of those things, but you know what? It's something about understanding that God is keeping you. And you got to be just foolish to think you're keeping yourself. It's got to be something, and I'm not calling you foolish, but I'll just say something is wrong with you mentally if you think you have arrived here by yourself. If you think you are the only one that's taking care of you, you think it was the alarm clock. I know you. we give thanks to a lot of things. The alarm clock that woke me up this morning. Uh, listen, don't get it twisted. It was God that woke you up this morning. Don't get it twisted that the grace of God is there every step of the way for us. And no matter what you're dealing with in life, you've got to be reminded this morning that he's a keeper. In other words, when God keeps us, he is able to infuse us with joy. 
Even when people smile in your face and stab you in the back, um, God infuses us with peace and happiness. Uh, even when people tell you that they love you and you know that they don't mean you any good, uh, you got to know that the text starts off clearly. The text starts off by saying now. Everybody say now. That's the present. Now, this word suggests a sense of urgency. Something must take place immediately. But understand that the word now is special all by itself. The word now is found so many times in the word of God. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. 1 John 3 and 2 says beloved now we are now the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that that when he shall appear that we shall be like him we shall see him as he is Psalm 119 and 67 says before I was afflicted I went astray but now have I kept thy word John 13 and 7 says Jesus answered and said unto him what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. John 16 and 12 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So now is an expressive word that speaks about the moment or the present with God. The word now is showing some urgency, but urgency of what? An urgency to whom? Now it goes after this. It says now, then there's a comma, and it says unto him. The first word I've given you now, as I mentioned it to you, that's the present. Uh, unto him, that's the person. The, the text says, who is him? Well, Jude is talking about Jesus. Uh, that's who he is to him. Him. He says, the one that existed before there was ever a when or a where. The one that's co that co-created the universe. Uh, the one that uh, sat on a great throne in glory. Uh, the one that took a ball of helium and hydrogen and placed it in the sky. The one that came down through 40 and two generations. Uh, the one that, that we considered to be Mary's little baby. The one that was teaching like a scholar at the age of 12. The one that was baptized by his cousin at the age of 30. The one that walked this earth for 33 and a half years. The one that gave his all for us. Let's make it a little bit more personal. He says that to now unto him. Let's make it personal so we can understand it. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. A friend for the friendless. Doctor when I'm sick. Lawyer when I'm in trouble. Bridge over troubled waters. We're talking simply about him. The great I am. This is who we are talking about. And I need you to understand this morning that because we're talking about him, we need to remember that God is able. That is, it, it literally means it to me that he exists. The text goes on to say, now unto him, in fact, let me go backwards. In Hebrews, I just thought of this, in Hebrews uh, chapter 13, uh, I believe it's verse number 8, um, it implies that Jesus is the same. Yesterday, yesterday, today and forever. Can I say that again? He's the same. Yesterday, uh, that would have been Saturday, right, for you. Today and forever. That's what you're thinking, right? But can I tell you, he was the same then and he's the same right now. 
at what he was capable of doing yesterday, he's capable of doing it right now. What he did, what he paid for last year, God is able to pay for it right now. I'm trying to help you understand clearly that God is able. He's able and ableness of God speaks about his immutability. It speaks about his ability to do what you think cannot be done or what he can do without any of your thoughts. Because God does not swear by you. He swears by his own power. That makes his deity strong. That makes makes him sovereign and in control of everything. If he speaks it, you live. He speaks, you die. He can move the whole world without even uttering his voice. I'm trying to help you understand clearly that God is able. There is no mountain that God cannot help you climb. That there's no valley he can't pull you out of. There's no sickness that God cannot heal. There is nothing that you are facing that God cannot handle. Can I preach this? If you know God is able, then you just know God is able. Nobody have to tell you. You just know what you know. I don't know a lot of things, but I know he's able. I don't know when he's going to do it, but I got news for you. He's going to do it. I don't know what time he's coming, but I'm looking because I know he's on his way. I don't know what you think about the power of God, but I know God is able. And my mama didn't tell me that. I found it out through the word. But watch this here. When you put this all together, that he is able, that shows us something else. That That's his power. You, you all will get it in a moment. Uh, understand that back in the day when Jesus walked this earth, uh, he was able to perform some miraculous miracles. Remember this. Just don't forget it. That he was able. He was able then. He's able now. I, I think about stories in the Bible and different little illustrations that speak to the power of God and how he's able. And you remember when he was in Cana of Galilee, he turned a pitch of water into some priceless wine. That shows us that he's able. He fed over 5,000 with two little fish and five loaves of bread. Somebody shout, he's able. He healed men and women of their diseases. Why? Because he's able. He defied the powers of nature and stopped the fierce storm by saying, peace be still. You ought to look at somebody and say he's able. He turned a cemetery dwelling maniac into a traveling evangelist. Why? Because he's able. He opened blinded eyes. I'm trying to help y'all. He fixed up twisted tongues. He unstopped deaf ears. Uh, uh, do you know why he was able to do it? Why? Because uh, he's able. Uh, he did all of that back then, but keep in mind, um, he's the same. I've told you what I was doing. Um, he was the same when? Yesterday. Y'all about to get this. Uh, he's the same today. A and it's forever. Don't y'all run out here talking about forever more. The text says forever. And forevermore, you just adding stuff to the word. It says forever. And the text says unto him that is able. You got to see this, which tells me if he did it before, I'm about to blow it. He can do it again. Why? Because he's still able. Now unto him, I'm showing you the text for those who are checking me out. Uh, now unto him, that is able. That's his power, okay? To keep you, watch this, that's his protection. Y'all getting this right? So whatever you need this morning, God is able. Okay? He's still able to take insufficient and make it mighty. He's still able to heal your body. He's able to tell the storms in your life to hush and be still. He's able to save us from the gutter to the uttermost. He's able to open closed eyes, closed minds, and even closed hearts. So whatever you need from the Lord this morning, 
I, I dare you to turn it over to Jesus and watch him work it out. Because while you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. If you trust him, God will move in your life. If you believe that he's capable of handling what's handling you, God can shift some things in your life in an instant. I told you that at the beginning it says now. Now. He can do it right now. Because we serve a God that his movement is determined by himself. It's not determined by you. You can scream and holler and pray all night long. God's not going to move until you activate your faith in him. And if you start believing the stuff that you really believe him for, God will make a way out of no way. Oh my God, how many times have God opened up a dry area in your life? How many times have he fixed some things that were broken? How many times has God shown up over and over again for you? You can't count the many blessings God has really given you over your life. You can't count them all, but you can remember he did it, all right? And I promise you the reality is, is is that he can do whatever he wants to do. I love it because uh, he shows us right here in this text uh, that I'm the one able to keep you. Y'all missing this. Uh, I, I feel like I'm doing this all by myself. Uh, he's able to keep you. What is he keeping me from? Everything. The text says he's keeping you from uh, Falling. I need you to see this uh, uh, and to present you faultless. He keeps you from falling, so that means he holds you up and then he presents you without a spot or wrinkle. Even though you are capable of falling and capable of being in sin, he still says, I'm going to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. In other words, one writer says, I'm saving you from yourself. I'm putting you in the, he says, I'm raising you up as a trophy even though I know you've done wrong. I know you are wrong, but I'm still trusting in what I've put in you and showing the world that you're faultless. Not because you didn't do anything wrong, because, but it's, it's because of my righteousness, not yours. God has a way of taking something that's broken and looking at it different than what the world looks at. You look at people and you threw at them because they are not what you want them to be. I'm so glad my life ain't in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. And you better be glad yours ain't in mine for that matter. But I want you to know that the reality of the text is when he presents you faultless, watch this, y'all are missing this. When he presents you faultless before the presence of his glory, listen to how he does that. The text says, you got to read this, with exceeding joy. A according to the text, I, I, I got to show you this. He's able to do, and I'm just giving you this, what the Lord gave me. He's able to do four things. He's able to protect us. He's able to preserve us. He's able to make us pure, and he's also able to make us perfect. I, I got to show you this. He talks about exceeding joy. I, I got to give it to you, which is uh, translated from the Greek as, um, what is that? That's a, that's a third letter. So it, it means ex, exaltation. So it means uh, uh, that God uh, presents you to himself uh, faultless with joy. You'll get it later. And I don't know about you this morning, but 
I've, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to bless his name. And let me tell you why. Not just because he's able, because I hung my hat on something earlier if you're watching. I hung my hat on he's the same yesterday. Y'all didn't listen to y'all. He's the same today and forever. And guess what? Tomorrow, I'll have to thank him once again. I'll thank him for now. I'm thanking him now for what he did yesterday, okay? Get, don't forget this, y'all. I'm thanking him now for what he did yesterday. And when tomorrow comes, I'll still be thanking him now. You'll get it later. I'm going to always have a now mentality as I give him praise. I'm always thinking about the now. God, you're good to me right now now. See, some of y'all missing this because you can't thank him because you got to have it in your hand before you thank him. You got to learn how to thank him for what you don't have because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what? Not seen. I don't have to see it to believe it. I don't have to have it to know that God is able. God is able to do whatever he wants to do. Why? because he has all power. I'm almost out, y'all. And you've got to understand that no matter what your situation is, God has the power to change it at any moment. In fact, look at your neighbor and just say, it don't take him long. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't take God long to shift your situation. He can change your life in an instant. That's why you can be sitting in worship and the word finds you and you get deliverance right then. That's why you can be sick on your way to the doctor and you get there to the doctor and you're healed. That's why people don't understand that you can be headed to hell one moment and be rerouted and go to heaven the next. God can shift things in an instant. That's why you gotta learn how to thank God for the now. I'm here now unto him who's able. Watch this here. I, I want to say this, uh, and I don't know if you ever think about this, uh, but I think about how good God has been to me. And, and I can't help but to praise uh, his name. But can I just help you understand something clearly as we leave? Uh, God has really been good to you. I, I don't think y'all understand me. God has really saved you from a whole lot of things. God has really protected you from a whole lot of things. Some of y'all still ain't got it. Uh, God has really taken care of you uh, and really blessed your life uh, off of some stupid things that you've done. God has really taken care of you. Uh, and, and you got to really be crazy and, uh, and on drugs or whatever you may be on. Uh, something's got to be wrong for you to not even understand that God is the one that's keeping you. So, so, so how do I do this? Uh, you know, I think about how good he's been. I even hear uh, the songwriter says as I look back over my life uh, and as I think things over, watch this, uh, I've, I have to truly say, y'all have said this before, uh, that the Lord has been good to me. Uh, I, I have to go back, uh, even back uh, you know, to yesterday because I can't go too far. Uh, go back to yesterday when he woke me up yesterday. Uh, I, I got to think about today uh, that he blessed me today, kept me. He's blessed me in the past and my soul cries out hallelujah. Uh, let me show you what the word says because I just gave it to you and I want you to be able to see it very clearly. Uh, he says in this text, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Watch this. Uh, to present you faultless uh, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now that's the present. Uh, unto him uh, that's uh, the person that is able that's his power uh, to to keep you, that's his protection. From falling, that's to make you perfect. And to present you faultless, that's to make you pure. Before the presence of his glory, that's his prestige. With exceeding joy, that's our pleasure. And you've got to learn how to give God praise when you start thinking about everything that the Lord has done for you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I need you to just really, just really just feel it in your own spirit. As you think about it yourself, just feel it for a moment in your own spirit. And 
as you start thinking about it in your own spirit, you ought to just start saying to yourself, God is able. No matter what you're faced with, you ought to be able to just say to yourself, whatever it is I'm dealing with, God is able. If I've got financial problems, God is able. You got to start feeling it for yourself. God is able. What is he able to do? He's able to help me overcome uh, my inefficiencies. God has there helped me to sustain me during uh, my back my moments against when my back is against the wall. God is there to help me overcome the obstacles. He's there to help me climb the highest mountains. God is there to help me overcome every moment of my life when I feel like I'm falling down. I've got a God who helped me and lifted me up. The older people said that God will prop you up on every leaning side and we serve a God this morning that's able to help us bear the very things that break us down. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but sometimes you ought to just look at your own life and say I made it this far not by keeping all of the commandments I made it this far not by going to church every Sunday I made it this far not because my last name is Battles I made it this far because of the grace of God and of God be for me he's more than the world against me and you wonder how I keep coming back after you think I've fallen how do I keep standing up after you think that it's over and some of you like to count folk out because they got problems in their life but a child of God knows how to call on the name of the Lord and when you know God is able you can call him in the morning time I told you he was the same yesterday I can call him right now that means God is able to help me bear my problems and I can call him in the midnight hour when things look very bleak and dark don't you think God knows about my situation he that keepeth Israel never sleeps nor slumber he knows how to bless me he knows how to take care of me and every time I think that I'm about to go under every time it looks like I'm about to go down you're counting me out and some of you treat people like you're watching wrestling and you see them with the shoulder down and you put the hand down and say that's one and you put the second hand down and say that's two and right before you hit the mat the last time the shoulder come up and let you know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think is there anybody here that can begin to give God all of the praise and glory because you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side anybody here this morning I know it's Father's Day but every day is a day of Thanksgiving when I look back over my life and I see how much God has done for me I can't help but to give him praise anybody want to join me this morning you want to give God the glory for things that has happened but I'm not just praising God for the things that just has happened I'm praising God what he stopped from happening I'm praising God for my down moment because when I was down God lifted me and you want to know where I draw my inspiration from I can't help but to praise him because being presented in it before God is something to be thankful of and I thank God for the examples in my life and the best example his name is Jesus they hung him high and stretched him wide put nails in his hand and pierced him in the side he gave up his life but I've got to give you the good news it was early one Sunday morning you want to talk about power. It was on Sunday morning when he looked down 
back in the hell and looked at the devil in the face and told everybody was there. I was just here for a moment, but I'm about to leave you here because I still got work to do. And on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. And when he got up, there was a transfer of power from God to man and now I stand and tell you today that our God is able. Is there anybody here that can shout God is able? Can somebody give God the glory because God is able? If you got a praise, you ought to be giving him praise because God is able. What is he able to do? Why don't you pull your laundry list and remember where he brought you from? Why don't you look back over your life and see what he's done? Somebody shout, God is able. I know he's able. I know he's able because I've tried him for myself. Come on, hurricane. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. Come on, hurricane. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. Come on, hurricane. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. Has God been good to anybody here? I dare you to give him praise because he's able. Come on, let's celebrate him together. Come on, let's bless the name of our God. Come on, let's bless him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Everybody, let's bless his name. Let's bless him. That's enough. That's enough preaching. That's enough preaching. It's supposed to be, this is Father's Day. That's enough preaching for this day. Can you help me celebrate him one more time, everybody? Our God is able now unto him. Don't ever forget the now in your life because God is able. If you followed me, you'll understand what he's able to do. And honestly, I didn't know that God was as good as he is until I've been through so much in my life. You can read the Bible, read it, read it, read, read it all night long. But life experiences will change you quicker than anything. Read it. Yeah, read your Bible. Be a good Bible student. But when you close your Bible, you're going to be faced with life. And life will teach you that you have to be a good steward of your time because God knows how to bless you. I'm through. I'm finished. I, I've, given you, I've given you what the Lord has instructed me to give. I'm going to ask you if you all can stand. We're done. I'm, I'm just doing what I do. This is, y'all stand. I don't know if y'all know this by now. I'm a preacher. That's what I do. That's my occupation. And I just believe that preachers preach. Amen. And I believe that it's important to share and rightly divide the word of truth to you. I'm living a now life because God is able. Amen. A now life because I know what he's capable of doing. Don't doubt God. Don't walk around and say, I don't know. And disconnect from people who always tell you what God cannot do. God can do it. And you can prove it through the word. He's done it in the past. He can do it right now. Same yesterday, today. I want to make sure I hear it right. And forever. I want to take this moment and speak to a heart, to a soul, to a person who may be watching us online or a person that who may be in uh, this sanctuary today. 
that's unsaved, unchurched, and you're ready to give your life to the Lord. If you're here today and you want to unite with us, become a part of Hurricane Chapel, if you can just meet me right here at this altar, we will accept you. God will, has already approved it. You just got to walk by faith and believe that he can change your life. If you're here today, I want to give you that opportunity to express now that you want to be saved, but also express that I want to become a part of this ministry. I'm ready for God to do something new in my life. If that's you, I ain't got time to do a lot of talking. If that's you, just come on, okay? If you're here and you want to unite with us, this is your moment. If you're watching us online, you have the same opportunity to do the same thing because God is not constrained to just in the sanctuary. He's everywhere. If you're here today, this is our moment of salvation for those of you who want to be saved and you want to give your life to the Lord. How do I do it? I accept him as my savior. I believe, I've heard the word, I've heard it, but you should have heard it because I've preached it. You've heard the word. Now you have to allow it to work in your heart. Believe it in your heart. What am I believing? That God have raised him from the dead. And then the Bible says, if you believe that, thou shalt be saved. So there is no excuse for anybody to be unsaved if you can hear the word. You heard the word. It entered into your heart. Now it's up to you to receive what you've heard. That's salvation. You, didn't have, you don't have to hang over hell on a spider web. You, you got to do all those things. All you got to do is accept him as your savior, okay? And I promise you, the Bible says, and my granddaddy would say this, if you come, he'll no wise cast you out, okay? Come while the blood is still running warm in your face. Y'all know that stuff. Just come on while you can. You know, they tell you about, the, you know, these last days and how, how you got to make sure you're ready when he comes. And I used to hear those older preachers say things like, don't let him catch you with your work undone. If you're out in the field, y'all know that, they tell you to stay there. But I'm telling you, uh, you have no excuse to be saved today. The door stand open and we're ready to receive you. We've done what he's asked us to do. You all may be seated in his presence. One more time, give the Lord praise this morning. We're grateful for your presence again. Um, let's all stand now as we um, prepare ourselves to leave this place. And fathers, enjoy your day and enjoy your time after you cook your own meal today. All right. Amen. I'm not throwing shade. I just understand what a father looks like and what the responsibilities are. All right. Everybody good? God is good, isn't he? I, I pray, I really pray, I, I really pray, I'm saying this from another place that I don't say, I, I really pray that today's word will encourage you, no matter what, to know, because sometimes people deal with real issues, and you just need, you don't need nothing deep, you just need to know that God is able, and that God has not forgotten about you, and that's all I was trying to say to you, is that no matter what, don't let the devil in your head have you thinking that you're not going to win. You're going to make it. And God is going to give you the strength. Final thing before the benediction, um, don't ever forget to praise God. Don't ever forget to thank him for his now, okay? The now of your life. Don't forget it. And then the third thing is not biblical. Don't forget your kids in the back, all right? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this moment. We give you glory for what you always do. We honor you. We bless you. And God, we pray that what we've presented today, we pray, God, that it will be pleasing in your sight. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you continue to say and do to us. Now, God, I pray your blessings upon your people. Let this day be a day of thanksgiving. Let us rejoice and let us be glad therein. We honor you and we bless you. And as we leave and go our separate ways, we will be careful to give your name praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all agree together and say amen. 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 God bless all of you and those of you that are online as well.